share the screen to start it? Um, no, don't share it right now. Um, I'm just going to do the Education USA bit, and then I will hand it over to you, and then you can share okay. your screen. Okay, it's almost ready. Um, Florence, can you still see the the slideshow on my screen? Yes, I see the slideshow on your screen. And you're on the uh, side in a small box. Okay, perfect. And uh, has the slide changed now? Can you see what is yes. education USA? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna go live. Okay, we're live. We're just going to get started. All right, let's get started. Assalamu alaikum everyone. I'm Aisha Siddiqui and I'm an advisor at Lahore's Education USA office. Um, welcome to this year's first session um, of the Ramzan slash Ramadan speaker series. And um, this series is a cornerstone of Education Day's programming during the month of fasting. We know that this month isn't just about fasting. It's also about reflection and growth. So this is why the topics that we have picked for this month's uh, Ramzan speaker series are going to be a deviation from our usual topics such as applications and university search. So among other things, um, one of the topics we're going to discuss today is art and creativity and how that affects the human spirit and general well-being. And today we have with us Dr. Florence Francis from the U.S. Embassy for that. Dr. Francis is a licensed social worker at the embassy, and she has received her master's and doctorate from uh, in social work from Rutgers. 
workers, and almost three decades of experience in the public sector um, in social work interventions. And she's dealt with a wide range of issues that are common to human beings across cultures. I will hand it over to her in just a minute. I'm going to give you a brief background on what Education USA is all about. We can just promptly get started. So what is Education USA? We are a part of the US Department of State and uh, we are the official source on everything related to US education. Um, there are advising centers in all centers, all um, everywhere in the world. I think there are over 170 centers um, and we provide you with accurate current and comprehensive information about how to proceed with your US education plans, how to find your best fit university, how to do a pro application process, financial aid, everything. So what you see on your screen are some of the services we have um, and 99% of them are absolutely free of cost. So the big one here is the one-on-one -on -one that we offer. All you have to do is go to our website, educationusa.pk and sign up for advising and you will be assigned an advisor who will work with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And uh, aside from that, we have the free workshops for GRE, SAT, TOEFL, them are going on right now on USCFP's Facebook page. So do give that a follow. We have a resource library in one of our three centers. Our centers are in Islamabad, Karachi, and Lahore. Uh, right now, the library is currently closed, but we plan to open that very shortly. Um, and then, of course, there are some mock tests. So these are the five steps to US study. And it doesn't matter where you are on this line, on this linear trajectory, just wherever you are, you can and touch bank will be happy to help you out. Most of the students who work with us usually find themselves somewhere between one and two because you know researching your options is often the most overwhelming step. There are over 4,000 um, institutions to, and programs from. And so narrowing it down is the first step, the most overwhelming, but also um, it streamlines everything else as you go along. This is the website and just reach out to the center closest to you, shoot us an email and happy to get in touch with you. I have stopped sharing my screen now. And um, once again, thank you so much, Florence, for being here. I'm going to hand it over to you and we will have question and answers right after this, a Q&A session. If you have any questions, you can either um, put them in on your Zoom Q&A box, or you can just leave a comment below on Facebook if you're joining us from there, and we will just get to them right at the end. Uh, thank you again, Florence. Thanks for being here, and over to you. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction and for the information about uh, U.S. education, and uh, I do encourage people to take advantage of your services and to consider uh, getting education um, overseas. It's uh, something that expands uh, our life experience in a way that other things just cannot do. So if it can be possible, it's something to consider. Um, I myself uh, studied overseas in, in a few different countries and always found it to be uh, much more than just the academics. It's uh, a life experience that's uh, indescribable. Today, um, I'm going to talk to you about art, creativity, and the human spirit. I'd like to say hushamdit to everyone. Welcome, I'm so happy to have you here. And I hope that you find something that you enjoy um, in this talk and uh, maybe have a little bit of uh, things to think about and we can discuss uh, in the end with our question and answer. Um, here you see uh, that we're gonna talk about the connection between art, creativity and mental health and wellness. So mental health and emotional wellness is my specialty area. Um, you would come and talk to a clinical social worker if you wanted to improve your mental health and wellness, if you just wanted to fine tune it, if you wanted to figure out how to um, just be uh, more engaged, uh, feel more energetic and more enthused about life. Those are things that uh, social workers can work with you on, as well as serious mental health and other issues. So um, today I'd, I'd like to say Ramadan Mubarak to all of you and uh, thank you again for being here. When we think about creativity, when we think about art, it's one of the few things that actually engages a human being in um, making things. So art is the process of creation, something that um, engages the entire brain. So here you see 
that uh, a whole bunch of brains <laughs> and we can look at how art uh, and consider how art impacts the brain in unique and special ways. It's not just um, something that people have thought about, it's things that have also been researched. So by researching this, we can see that art is very good for our mental health and well-being. Uh, it's also been shown that art and looking at art can be a way to increase our brain activity and can be a way to um, help to slow the aging process. So if you have elderly parents or grandparents um, or as you raise uh, children or just for your own interest in well-being uh, as students and individuals in the world, take time to look at things in an artistic way. So it doesn't have to just be created art. It can also be the art that's in nature, but take time to notice. So at this picture, which is painted by Vincent van Gogh, uh, the title is Wheat Field with Cypress. Uh, you can see how the movement is happening in this picture, the way the wind is blowing, the um, shades and the colors in the sky. Uh, so if you take a minute and look at it, you might feel something. So we're gonna take just a minute, less than a minute actually, and just take a look at this picture. See the movement, notice the colors, the direction of the line, the composition. And possibly you notice a little bit of a calming within yourself when you take a look at that. We also know that doing art, actually getting ourselves into art, experiencing artistic activities such as sculpting, painting, drawing, music, and we'll discuss some other ones as well, very often will lower our stress levels and promote mental calmness. Uh, this has been shown uh, through brain scans and through other research that has been done. So the experience of doing art is good for our health and wellness. It can calm our spirit, connect to something that is a spiritual sense. Uh, it's not necessarily just the tangible aspect of it, but it's something that's emotional, spiritual in that way. And also by observing art, we can find that we'll find that inner peace um, and calmness. We see someone here trying to uh, maybe see different colors and shapes and uh, directions, painting a lobster. Again, just take a minute to look at that. Maybe imagine yourself in that picture. Just taking a minute to be creative. That's the unique thing about art. It's the act of creating. Um, it engages us in a way that will often take our mind away from worries and other negative emotions. So doing art can provide a relaxing moment. It actually has been shown to lower blood pressure and reduce stress hormones in the body. So if you're having a rough time at work, school, you have a test coming up, it may seem like the thing you should do before a test is study, study, study. But maybe the thing that you should do before a test is take a few minutes to listen to some nice music, take a few minutes to doodle, to draw, to um, uh, do some other activities that we're gonna see as we go through the slideshow. But um, a way to calm yourself um, is to draw. If you have to be waiting for someone, you have a situation where um, you're waiting for someone, maybe there's someone in the hospital and you're waiting for them and you're worried about them. By taking a few minutes or taking a pad of paper with you and a pencil and just doodling while you're waiting, you'll see that the time goes so much quicker and you'll be able to uh, find yourself relaxing and not thinking so much and not worrying so much about the person that you're waiting for. Children are wonderful, wonderful role models when it comes to getting engaged, getting busy with art. Children create naturally. Uh, they uh, will put things together, 
uh, make things, color things. I mean, sometimes where you don't want them to, <laughs> they're coloring on the wall or they're coloring uh, someplace where you didn't expect. But children um, just are engaged in creation. It's a process that engages their brain. And what we've learned is that when children um, have the opportunity to do creative activities, it actually increases the connections in their brain and helps with intelligence. So it could improve your IQ also. Um, art is an additional language. It's, it, it uses the pathways that learning a second or a third language would use. So doing art helps to um, help children and grownups increase their problem solving skills. Uh, you develop your creativity. So sometimes we feel like, oh, I can't do it. I'm not creative. Other people can do that. But actually, if uh, you had the chance as a child to do art activities, the you're, it's very likely that you did them. Some children don't have maybe access to as much uh, art time and art activities. But if you had that opportunity, the chances are that you did art when you were smaller. And that's all in you. It never leaves you. It's there. Your creativity is a lifelong um, ownership. And you just have to activate it. It's kind of like if you leave your car to sit in the garage or your motorbike and you don't use your motorbike for weeks and weeks and weeks and months on end, it's going to be a little sluggish and hard to get going. So the same thing with our creativity. If we've been so busy studying, if we've been so busy just working and forgetting to engage in creative activities, um, that muscle of creativity may have gotten tired and we may have to revive it. So consider um, taking some time maybe during this Ramadan season to paint something, to draw something, to send a picture to somebody or to sit down with a child and do, to do some artwork. Grownups just sometimes feel very stuck and end up uh, judging themselves. They feel that their art isn't good enough or that there's something that uh, somebody else could do better. We're not looking to do comparison. When you get creative, when you get engaged in a creative activity, try to just do it. So grownups can often learn from children how to put their ego aside, how to find humility and just get engaged and do it, do art and relax with it. So now we're gonna think a little bit about exactly what is art. Basically in the art arena, there really truly is something for everyone. Not only is there something for everyone, there's probably two or three or four things for everyone. So um, on the side of uh, this particular slide, you might be able to see some of the words that are there. Music is definitely art and so is theater. Painting and drawing, dance is art, computer art. Um, doing set design, uh, working in other words in a theater um, or helping to design a set. Writing is a form of art and creativity. Um, of course, martial arts. So we don't always think of that, but um, there are some martial arts. In other words, uh, like karate or bodybuilding, yoga, some activities in um, the physical arena, which involve um, slow, act, slow movements and very mindful activity. It's a different style of um, thinking about art, but that's another way to kind of get that benefit of uh, engaging your body and your mind uh, to uh, do something that is a discipline and a creative activity. Public speaking and just uh, reciting things, poetry, reading aloud, these are other forms of art photography and film, sculpture, uh, architecture, industrial design, even food preparation. So basically uh, many of us might be involved in cooking something every day. It isn't necessarily the cooking of it, but how we present it, right? How we put that together on the plate, how we set things up. That's um, another way to um, do something artistic. Interior design, um, organizing our homes, uh, gardening uh, outside and trying to put different flowers together to have them uh, look nice and other creative activities. So as I said, art 
exists in many forms. There's basically something for everyone. Some other benefits that uh, have been found in art and in doing art for the human spirit, for our health and well being, um, is the ability to have self expression and, in general, expression. So, in other words, I said earlier that art is a kind of language. Well, by um, doing art, um, we have a way to get some emotions out that sometimes get stuck. You know, you may have had the experience when you listen to certain music um, or when you did certain kinds of music that you found yourself emotional, crying. So that there you see how art can release within us certain emotions. And there are times in our life when we've been through very, very challenging experiences. And so drawing or writing poetry about it or just writing in a journal, these are ways that we can get those feelings that we sometimes uh, find are stuck within us and maybe we actually don't have words for, we can get those feelings out and we can find that we um, are more at peace and more at ease. Um, another benefit that's found in art is the emotional and spiritual connection and communication. So for example, you could be um, uh, overseas studying in another uh, country or traveling, and you might not speak the same language as someone else, but you can look at a piece of art, a sculpture, or you can listen to some music or see a painting, and you can communicate without words. So art is another way to have emotional and spiritual connections and communication. When we engage in art, we increase our brain activity. So again, it helps to keep the brain young and functional. It slows the aging process, but it also helps um, to develop the brain. So art is very good for that as well. It can promote curiosity. So by being engaged in artistic activities, uh, we may actually find that we're more interested in other elements of life and more engaged in living our lives in a healthy and productive way. It's definitely been proven uh, many, many uh, experiences to aid in emotional healing. So again, if you've had a rough um, circumstance, a, a, a trauma in your life, uh, something that you just really can't put into words very well, take um, out some, a couple crayons or colored pencils or a marker and see if you can draw what you're feeling. Maybe it would be just colors. Maybe it would be lines and shapes. Um, but try to give yourself that space to uh, grow and develop and heal uh, through art. It also um, is beneficial because it gives the experience of beauty and joy. So art is something that really can give us that experience of beauty and joy. So we're going to think a little bit here about how do we get started? What can we do in order to engage ourselves in art? I ask a question here, do you have children around? Now, many, maybe some people don't have children of their own, but they may have children around, they may have nieces and nephews. Um, if you have children around and you're so inclined, spending time with children can sometimes uh, jumpstart your creativity because children, um, as I say, are very, very interested in uh, just doing art, just getting involved. And we have a short video here. This little bitty person is uh, about uh, two years old, a little under two years old. Uh, so there's no language, actually no words. There's no concern about um, making the right sounds. It's just the experience of engaging and really getting into the opportunity to uh, have self-expression. We're gonna hope that this uh, little video clip plays well. And um, it did uh, get us stuck a little bit yesterday when we tried to go back to um, the uh, rest of the slides. So if that happens, you just have to uh, hang with us for a minute and uh, we'll hope that uh, it comes through um, clearly again. Let's see.
So again, what we're gonna pay attention to, just the freedom that you see here. So there you saw the um, experience of a, a child without any concern about trying to make things perfect, just really uh, being able to enjoy um, with freedom and experience that freedom, that uh, creativity. Um, and I'm just going to double check here with Aisha. Can you see now the next slide? That says yes, what I can see the next slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So. Um, we have uh, this question now to think about what materials do you have? Maybe you don't have a child around that you can <laughs> relax and have some fun with and make up an, uh, an imaginary language, um, which would be the language of art. Um, but you may have uh, materials that are completely um, free and accessible. You don't have to go out and spend money. You can uh, make art with uh, simple materials. You can use the old fashioned uh, traditional things like crayons and pencils and markers, um, if you happen to have them around. Maybe you have thought that the only purpose of a highlighter is to study and to highlight your uh, classwork. Well, actually you can draw and uh, use your highlighter for other things too. Um, but recycled items are also great for creating things. So even musical instruments uh, can be created from recycled materials. So uh, for example, any of these uh, tubes that you see uh, that might come from toilet paper or might come from paper towels, uh, you can put some rice inside of there and tape up the ends and paint the outside and make yourself uh, an instrument. Um, of course, um, <clears throat> other types of instruments uh, can be made with uh, plastic, uh, empty plastic bottles as well. And, uh, and then of course, uh, other types of art can be done with recycled materials. Um, here's some recycled art, just uh, using some paper boxes and uh, colorful snips of paper. And, uh, and there you go, you have uh, now uh, some funny faces that you could actually make a little theater. And uh, so you can do multiple kinds of art with uh, very, very little expense, with some fun and creativity. And uh, these are actually also very, very helpful um, puppets and things like this that uh, have uh, funny faces. If you want to try to, um, you know, talk about different topics with uh, children, you can use a puppet like this. And sometimes your children will share more information with you than they would if you just spoke to them directly face to face. So. Um, that's another uh, thing that can be helpful um, with art is that art can allow people to feel less um, tense. They can help people to feel relaxed and more able to share. In general, um, even just spending time looking at art and experiencing art can yield mental health benefits such as relaxation, improved memory and improved mood. So um, as I had mentioned, it's not necessary that you um, are the person creating the art. Uh, I do encourage you to, but it's also uh, great to be the person appreciating the art. 
uh, enjoying uh, what other people do and um, getting the benefits uh, of, of relaxation, improved memory and mood by spending time. Now we're gonna look at a little bit of art. So again, I'm gonna be quiet while you take a look at some of this art. This is a very famous block print uh, by Hokusai. It's a wood block print. So in other words, this is not a painting. This was a piece of wood that got carved um, and, and then, uh, well, several pieces of wood that got carved and then each one uh, got its different color of ink on it and got stamped to make this um, composition that we see here. Sometimes this is called uh, the wave. Sometimes it, it's called the great wave. The full name is uh, the great wave off Kanagawa. Um, but at any rate, this is a wood block print. It's one form uh, of making art. Um, did you know that you could also carve a potato? <laughs> you can carve a potato um, and then you can put ink on it. You can put some coloring on it and you can stamp with a potato. And you can try that um, the next time you have the opportunity if you have an extra potato. Now we're gonna take a minute and look at this picture. This picture is called Weaving. It's uh, a painting by Diego Rivera. So this one is actually a painting. Um, you know, it's something that uh, might look familiar to some people who are, are comfortable weaving. That's another great form of art is to do weaving. I think when you look at this picture, you can actually see the calm and the relaxation in the weaver, in the person that's creating the weaving. You can see the concentration. You can almost feel the way that her mind is working, her brain is engaged, looking at the colors, looking at where her threads are, looking at um, how the um, wor uh, work is coming together and how it's being created. And you can imagine that she isn't really worried about that many other things. She's so busy engaged in her weaving. Look at this painting now. In this painting, you also notice uh, a rug on the floor, which uh, is something that uh, I've come to appreciate very much by my time here in Pakistan is uh, the beauty of uh, the weaving and the rugs and the, the nodding that's done. Um, with that being said, you also see the striped clothing on the mother. Um, this is called the child's bath by a famous um, a woman artist in uh, the US, Mary Cassatt. Um, and uh, you notice how, you know, also the fabrics that we wear, the clothing that we have is another way of appreciating art and creativity. Here we have a design that was uh, taken from Islamic art. Um, art is good for us to look at and to create. It's a safe way to activate and experience emotions and a way to process feelings and find calm. The process of creating Islamic art is known to be a spiritual process, something that helps one to come into a place of peace, emotion and reflection. What is spirituality? Spirituality is that opportunity to connect to those things that are not biological, but to those things that are uh, of our spirit, of our creative nature. 
So with these um, pictures that we've looked at here, we've come to the end of, of this particular slideshow. So now we have the opportunity to consider uh, any questions that you may have, any thoughts that you have, um, and to give you the chance to share your knowledge and ideas. Thank you, Florence. That was a very insightful session. I actually really enjoyed it. Lee, the, um, the paintings you shared, those were uh, quite, quite beautiful, and I'm sure everyone has taken away something to ponder on. Um, so let's get back, let's get to the questions. So let's start, Lament we got on Facebook, uh, we have a viewer, Raisa, and she says that she's going to teach filmmaking to children and design the course for it. So um, she says that she's also teaching creative writing and astonished to see how children are, are not a create these days. And she's very happy that you're talking about this and the need for this. So that is a comment from her. Just wanted to read it out loud to you. Thank you. Um, other than that, let me just get to a few of the questions received earlier. So one of our students asks, any tips on how to incorporate art into your everyday life? So certainly um, there's the actual like doing of art, but the appreciation of art can be something that um, can be done if you have a chance to listen to some classical music or music of some sort that um, is uh, uplifting for you. Uh, try to pay attention to the instruments in the music. Try to pay attention to the voices in the music. Try to take the time to hear that. I see a guitar behind you there, Aisha, on the wall. <laughs> Looks yeah. like somebody may play, play music in your house. Um, so Unfortunately, not way. me, but yes. <laughs> okay, so um, the, uh, listening to music is one way to uh, participate in art. If uh, you have the chance to get up and move, to do dance, to uh, express yourself that way, that's also a way to um, process creativity. Um, on a daily basis, like I said, uh, food preparation is something that we might do, uh, maybe somebody's doing it for us if we're lucky, but <laughs> for many of us, we might be the ones preparing the food. Um, so yeah, rather than just like sitting down and eating it, you know, and not taking time to look at it, try to see if you can uh, prepare the food in an artistic way and um, consider uh, how that impacts your ability to enjoy your meal. Um, so those are ways. Um, and then keeping art materials near you. So that's going to be key. So if you, if you work in an office, you know, having a couple uh, colored pencils, a couple markers, something that you can maybe pick up, uh, you know, between calls or, you know, between meetings. If you're uh, studying and you have the opportunity to uh, take a little break from your studies to uh, possibly even look through uh, just like we looked at some of these paintings today. Um, so like I said, just looking at the art and, and not rushing through it, not just like flipping through a book. But that's the other way to um, have it near you so that you can enjoy it. Or when you are you know, having free time and you happen to be using your phone, instead of going to a game on your phone or instead of going to a chat and talk to friends, um, and just check who's uh, been on your page and been liking what you've been saying. Rather than doing that, uh, take a few minutes and look up some uh, artist that uh, maybe you heard about or see what comes up when you uh, Google local artists and see if there's uh, some uh, show in your area. Is there an art show or an exhibit that you might be able to visit? Um, here in Islamabad, uh, some of the local hotels have small galleries um, that you can go in or you know, the, in the hotels you can see in the hallway different uh, art. Um, so possibly places like that, cultural centers may have things that you can go and enjoy on your own or with a friend or with, with uh, your family members. I think you might be mute, Aisha. 
I'm sorry about that. Um, but thank you, Florence, uh, uh, for that. And I can vouch for the food preparation bit, because as I mentioned to you before the session, I do have two little humans and everything is about how I present the food to them. Because when it's visually appealing, the same thing will just go down so much better. So that's a good point. I've, I've never actually thought about it as art. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, another question we had was, uh, there's a student who's very interested in, you know, appreciate, well, there's a, a student who wants to view visual art paintings and sculpture, but they are in an area where they don't have access to galleries and museums. So are there any particular online resources that you would recommend for them to turn to? Yes, absolutely. So um, all of your main uh, museums in the United States. So for example, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Art Institute of Chicago, um, and many, many um, art, and then the Louvre, of course, in Paris. Um, I don't know about the, the new Louvre that's just been built in, uh, in the United Arab Emirates, but um, anyway, many, many of your large museums, um, and certainly the ones that are in the United States have um, online resources where you can actually virtually visit museums uh, online. And they also have um, the uh, free art, in other words, um, art that you can download that is what they call in the public domain. So those were in fact the things, some of the things that we looked at today, that's all art that's in the public domain. It's available, you could use it as a screensaver. That's another way to uh, experience art um, in a very uh, active and engaged way by having it up there on your screensaver. You could even have uh, rotating pictures uh, coming through uh, on your screensaver of different art that um, helps you to reflect and think about things and just appreciate it. So that's one way. And then, then again, I encourage um, anyone, regardless of where you are, if it's a rural area, to consider um, trying to um, get people involved in doing something creative. So possibly uh, even something like putting up a fence <laughs> could be something that has an element of uh, creativity and art involved. Um, or, you know, as I said, using recycled materials to try to um, put things on the wall to, to just decorate your house a little bit to make life a little bit more interesting in that way. Thank you. Okay, another question is, do you have a favorite painter or visual artist? So uh, there's this person called Mondrian. His art is very, um, it's, it's very angular, it's uh, square. It, it's often with just um, primary colors, uh, red, yellow, and blue. Um, but uh, he also uses black and white. Anyway, uh, I like uh, all art, but modern art, I would say is probably my favorite. Um, certainly the impressionist artists um, are interesting and fun to look at, but uh, I would probably uh, say that um, looking at uh, Mondrian uh, just helps me to feel happy. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That's a good reason. Um, Florence, another one is you get over the fear of just not being good enough or producing, you know, something that has no value or producing something that's just laughable. Like, a lot of people, a lot of students, they just don't even want to begin because they think that it'll just be whatever will be almost laughable. So how do you get over that initial fear? So as I said, you know, children are a great role model in that uh, specific uh, arena. But beyond that, um, you know, you're not going to be making your living probably from doing art. This is not about making a living. If you had to make your living from creating wallpaper or creating paint colors or creating uh, makeup shades, <laughs> um, so these are all different things that uh, someone else has done for us and we get to use, um, then it's different, right? But if you're doing art for your own emotional health and well being, that's what you want to stop and think about. This isn't about um, being good enough in order to be hung on a gallery wall. This is about 
self-expression. It's about um, being able to share in another way the things that are unique and special about you. We are so many people in the world, but each one of us has a unique a spark, a unique light, a unique gift and talent to bring to the world. And um, ours may not be in uh, the creative arts that are going to be admired by thousands for generations to come. Our uh, talent may be something that is uh, really for our family to enjoy. Um, there may be pictures or, or maybe there's a blanket or something that your family member has made for you that you treasure. And it isn't the most beautiful in the world, but because your child drew a picture for you or your niece or your nephew uh, gave you something or your grandmother uh, crocheted or knitted uh, a hat or a, a sweater for you, that's something that you treasure. So art isn't just um, about the um, tangible thing that's made. It's not just what we make. It's also the uh, part of ourself that we put into it that gives it its beauty and value. So trying to um, be humble, you know, seek humility um, in order to just uh, relax and enjoy the creative um, time that you have, the opportunity to be creative. That would be my suggestion. And then as we are in the time of Ramadan, I'd also say that you could try to pray while you're doing, um, you know, pray like in a sort of uplifting way, like a connectedness way, like just to try to think of spiritual things, think of, um, you know, health and well-being, think of love and peace and goodness while you're trying to draw or paint or sculpt or listen to music or make music. So trying to put your mind in a place of, of spiritual health and well-being before, during, and after the process of creation would be my suggestion. Okay, thank you. Um, another question we've gotten on Zoom is, do you think the digital art can have the same impact on the human spirit as traditional classical art forms? So it does, uh, I think it can definitely have uh, the same impact. Digital art uh, still requires creation. Now there are different kinds of digital art, right? When you're just like picking something from one place and moving it to another, you know, different programs have different levels of sophistication and different capacity to be individualized. But, um, you know, there's not, I would never um, discourage anyone if that's the art that you have access to, and if that's something that helps you to uh, find stress release and to feel uh, those creative uh, parts of yourself engaged, then uh, go right ahead and uh, get involved with uh, some digital art. There's nothing quite like um, actually util utilizing your hands. So something like uh, doing sculpture, you know, picking up some mud, <laughs> and putting it together and, and forming something with your hands or um, taking some clay or possibly, uh, as we showed in the slides, the recycled materials and putting them together. There's nothing quite like that. But on the other hand, um, if what you have access to and what makes you feel uh, engaged and connected is digital art, then go right ahead and do that. Oh, all right. Thank you. Um, so this one is from Facebook. I, we just have a couple of questions left. So this one says, um, how can we encourage creativity in a, an education where assessments and harsh review of student work is the only way to communicate with students these days, seemingly? Well, you know, the, there isn't always a flexibility in every setting. So even in our work environments, for example, um, you know, if we told our boss, um, well, I have to um, finish, uh, you know, playing some music before I can come to the meeting, I don't think that would go over so well. Um, similarly, in a classroom, right, um, the task is to be able to have certain knowledge and skills by the end of the course um, or by the end of the lesson, you have to have certain knowledge and skills. Um, the way, though, to bring creativity 
into the classroom um, can be by um, taking a minute to appreciate uh, whether it's uh, putting some flowers in the classroom, bringing in something that's interesting uh, to look at, uh, bringing in maybe uh, changing the um, things that you have hanging on your wall, you know, in your classroom, putting up uh, different colors or different pictures for different seasons of the year, um, asking uh, students or offering them potentially extra credit if they would um, take something that they learned in the class and maybe design a poster or design a graphic um, on the computer about what they've learned in the class. So it would require a certain amount of uh, willingness um, by the students and by the school, the institution, to be able to uh, bring creativity um, into a very, very rigid setting. Um, but it, when you have the time uh, and the opportunity, uh, offering those uh, options to, like I say, design graphics, um, display things in the classroom, encourage students to share um, anything that they have uh, experienced in the creative realm uh, can be one way to help bring art um, and to reduce the sort of rigid elements um, of the classroom. All right, thank you, Florence. Um, so Hiba, this I just want to answer. Le she says, would the live sessions recording be avail available after? Yes, it will be on our Facebook page. So um, feel free to view it whenever you want. Um, okay, Florence, this is the last question, I believe. This is a bit convoluted, so I'll just try to um, I'll try to get it across. I think this is what they uh, they mean. Uh, it's about the starting point. Um, so, you know, at, in your talk, you mentioned how art is good for our mental health and uh, helps anxiety and issues such as that. But uh, at the same time, issues like anxiety make it hard to get started because art requires a certain amount of patience. So when you're kind of stuck in that kind of cycle where you want to get started, but too anxious to actually sit still and um, do art. What do you have any specific advice for students like that? So um, again, that takes the um, yes, I do have advice, and, and that takes the um, sort of realm of um, trying to not be there to judge yourself. Now, there's a few suggestions I have. One, you could put a blindfold on. You could cover up your eyes. You know and then just uh, have a paper and pencils and just see what happens. Just uh, doodle. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever done that, but there's this activity that was uh, common years ago where you would just kind of draw random shapes and colors and you know, just shapes, just draw with a pencil and then take colors and just fill them in uh, randomly and see what you get. Um, so yeah, you can actually throw things uh, sort of upside down. And like I say, put a blindfold on. Don't even look at what it is that you're making. Just be so busy creating it. You also can try to stand up and sort of shake yourself out. You know, just kind of loosen yourself up a little bit and try to take a few deep breaths and exhale. Exhale the stress, exhale the anxiety. And then try to breathe in the calm and uh, try to remind yourself as you're just drawing and creating that you're not uh, doing this for a grade. You're just doing this for your own satisfaction. You're doing this for your own health and well being. And that by doing the activity, if you remember the weaver in our picture there, um, by doing the activity, you'll find the engagement and you'll find the way to calm yourself down. Um, it's okay to, you know, maybe start out with one piece of paper and uh, color on that and then turn it over and start with another one. Um, you don't have to keep the things that you make if you don't want to. It's just the act of creating that actually gives your mind that chance to kind of uh, de-stress and let go of tensions that are in there. You also could try um, collage. So collage is where you open up a magazine, you open up uh, some paper or something that you don't need anymore, even labels off of uh, cans, uh, labels off of packages from the store, and you can cut pictures out 
from um, these uh, magazines or cut pictures out from labels from the store, um, from different things that uh, are discarded. And then you can glue them together. You can put them together. So you don't actually have to you know, make yourself use a pencil and pen or markers or crayons or paint brushes. You can um, take pictures and put them together and make a collage. So really um, the ability to create and relax and to do art is only limited by um, your, your imagination on some level. If you allow yourself to um, be creative regardless of what you have around, what you don't have around, and just trying to um, be uh, focused on the experience of doing the art rather than the outcome of the art. That can help hopefully help you reduce your anxiety. All right, thank you. That, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I think that is all the questions we have. Um, I think we can wrap it up. Is uh, if you have anything else to Florence, any closing re remarks, um, go for it. No, I just would like to say to everyone, uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I, thank you for having an interest in uh, being creative and sharing your creativity. Everything that we have that we enjoy, like I mentioned, for example, uh, the clothing that we have, the different fabrics that are there, the colors of paint on our wall, the, the um, rugs on the floor, the, the things around us, all of the things that uh, we maybe take for granted, somebody took the time to create, to uh, think about, to design for us. And so um, just uh, appreciating um, the art in our everyday, as well as engaging in art for our own mental health and well-being is something that I strongly encourage you to do. But I do thank you so much for inviting me today. And I hope that uh, you have many more opportunities to uh, do art in your life in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Florence. We loved having you and we really hope you're back soon with us. We would love to do another session at some point. Um, and to the students, thanks for viewing in. Thank you um, for you know, joining us on a Saturday noon. I really hope you incorporate art um, in your everyday life in one form and another. And I really hope that you prioritize your well-being because that is so important. Now with that, I think we can wrap it up and um, you know, have a great week and everyone, Florence, and we'll see you with our next, next session soon. Bye-bye.